So as we know, I've decided to start doing a vlog instead of a blog because I just don't have time to sit in front of the computer and type and then edit and check and try and find a picture that actually matches and suits what I'm doing and talking about that day. So this seems to be a little more appropriate as I can, I can take you with me on my daily adventures. So this is what I'm doing today or just finished doing, I guess. I just finished milking Belle. And I hope that's on her. I don't know. I can't even see. There's Belle. And then this is the milk I just milked from Belle. So this is my little time out and vlog moment. Uh, a lot of the responses we've been getting to, um, to our year of living off the land is it's kind of turned into this whole pioneer eating adventure thing, which, yeah, that's, I guess, the big part of it. But a bigger part of it would be eating off of what Alberta has to offer. Like if there was no grocery stores, if there was no imports, if, if that wasn't a possibility with our food system, what would that look like? How would we eat like that? Um, and we also want to showcase what everyone, honestly, could be eating from Alberta as everything we're growing and raising ourselves, everything we, well, like buying grain and, and oats and things like that directly from the farmers. Um, anybody can be doing that. It's stuff you can get at the farmer's market. It's stuff you can approach a farmer directly for and say, hey, can I buy a side of beef? Can I buy a pork, a pig? Um, the raw milk, of course, is a legality issue that we need to try and figure out somehow in this province. But as farmers, we have access to being able to do that. Um, yeah, so it's it's about living off the land. It's It's not about replicating the pioneer life. But you know, whatever, I don't care. Call it eating like a pioneer. That's cool. It's kind of kind of what we're doing, except the pioneers were able to import baking soda and were able to import coffee and, and other things that, that we're not doing because it doesn't grow in Alberta. I know, the salt and sugar. Oh, I've also heard the thing about sugar beets. Why, why aren't we using the sugar beets from southern Alberta as opposed to importing evaporated cane juice? Um, I haven't looked into it much, really haven't. And from what I understand, it's kind of like our salt situation in Alberta, which is so commercialized and is so like owned by big companies that you can't go directly to the salt mine and buy salt. And you can't go directly to a sugar beet operation and buy sugar. It's through Rogers or it's through whatever other big name sugar people or Windsor or whatever for big name salt people and also again don't know for sure I've only heard that the sugar is the sugar beets are very GMO'd or very you know what I mean you know exactly what I mean when I say that um, so we're just kind of trying to keep it super healthy as well as super local so it's kind of one of those things we have to give up the lo local side to ensure our our healthy food side kind of I don't know it's what we chose to do what do you do so yeah stay tuned for more exciting blogging life of our year of living off the land with nature's green acres